right, here we go. We're going to start with the introduction to endophoresis. And the first slide that we show is just the family of all the offerings through North Coast Medical, starting with the conventional Activa dose and the electrodes that go with that, and then the patch products. And then just a simple definition of iontophoresis is a non-invasive way to move ions out of solution into the underlying tissue using direct current, moving positive ions with positive current and negative ions with negative current. That's used in a lot of uh, applications in physical therapy, also in uh, your family practice, cosmetics with different solutions. Uh, it works basically using, um, as it says here, electromigration and electroosmosis. Um, it's just moving solutions driven by electrical current. You have an active electrode which contains the medication, and you would apply a light current to that medication if it's a negative ion, negative current. And the dispensive electrode is placed over any area just to complete a circuit. The process does require a voltage and current source. Each has a specific function. Current moves ions out of solution into the underlying tissue. Voltage reduces resistance to current to allow that function to happen. If it's a high resistive area and you don't have enough voltage to reduce resistance, voltage can't move ions out of solution. That's one of the advantages to the Activa Dose 2. It's an 80 volt source that there really aren't any restrictions in the anatomy to where it can be used because it will reduce resistance regardless over a short period of time, allowing those ions to move out of solution into the underlying tissue. Um, advantages uh, to iontophoresis is non-invasive. There is no um, needle puncture. There's no open wounds, no possibility of uh, creating any contamination or moving any bacteria into the skin. It's localized, site-specific, non-systemic, with very little, if any, side effects. It's a controlled do dosage through intensity and time, ensuring the patients receive appropriate amount of medication for their condition. It offers pain relief through localized pain relief quickly without the need for oral or injected medications. Safety considerations for ionophoresis would apply to uh, the Activa dose clinical as well as patches. It's generally safe for individual. Minor skin irritation or tingling sensation may be um, felt by the patient during the treatment. All healthcare professionals responsible for reading the instructions for use and indications for uh, contraindications People with certain medical conditions, such as implanted electrical devices, uh, should avoid use unless their health care provider approves of it. Mm -hmm. I suggest that the, my opinion in, in conversation, that the therapist check with the prescribing physician if they have any concerns or questions and get authorization from that prescribing physician. Uh, pregnant women should also be consulted through their their attending physician, avoid using it over open wounds. We're dealing with DC current and it'll find the path of least resistance and uh, could create an issue in that area. Uh, it's a valuable tool in reducing um, inflammation. It offers a non-invasive target approach. Further uh, research is uh, continuing to expand the potential applications outside of just the physical therapy arena. So that's basically the review of Activa Dose clinical use. We're going to move into the uh, Activa Patch product. This is the most widely used iontophoresis delivery system to date, meaning that compared to the clinical application with the Activa Dose, this is the patch products have become widely used due to the convenience and the time it does save the clinic, the patient. Is basically administered in the clinic, and uh, the patient leaves the clinic to complete the treatment on the go. 
This is a detailed outline of the iontophoresis starting in 1978 and going all the way through current um, with all of it. Uh, IOMED 1978 introduced iontophoresis originally. MP came out in 1992 with their product competing with IOMED. North Coast entered the market with the conventional electrodes in 1998. Uh, in 2000, uh, the advent of wireless Ionto was introduced by Rolyan. It was a birch point product manufactured 24 hour patch. MP introduced the Hybresis in 2004. Hybresis was originally an IOMED product. Activa Tech mm-hmm. launched Trevarion in mm-hmm. 2006. Uh, North Coast Medical uh, introduced the second generation. Norco iontophoresis product manufactured by Axelgard. In 2008, uh, on the uh, patch side, North Coast Medical promotes Activa Patch as a premium wireless product. In 2009, Activa Tech launched Activa Patch 2.5. And then North, North Coast, Activa Tech successfully produced the third generation Norco buffered electrode. In 2013, our Ionopatch Patch stat was introduced to the market, which was a four-hour patch. North Coast Medical acquired Activa Tech in 2014. And then in 2015, North Coast Medical launched the 12.0 and the 4.0. And uh, MP exits the market. Types of ionophoresis, and, and we've talked about both of them. There's wireless and there's wired. Wireless is the number one utilized of the two right now. Wired does have a specific application, and that is in areas of the anatomy that have a high resistive area to where a low volt product, such as patches, cannot reduce the resistance to allow current to flow. The Activa Dose uh, 2, being an 80 volt maximum product, will reduce that resistance to allow the completion of a iontophoresis treatment. So there is still an application for that. And it is, I mean, there's still a lot of it used today, not to diminish that at all. Wireless is a short wear time, low current, long wear time, low current. Wired uh, requires a separate controller and uh, drug delivery electrodes and dispersive pad. It's the highest current output and the shortest wear time. Uh, Four milliamps is a 10 minute, 40 milliamp minute treatment. Uh, Patches are set up to deliver an 80 milliamp minute over a specified period of time. The time is dependent upon the patient's ability to withstand current under this, under the wired. The treatment goal of all iontophoresis is uh, to move ions out of solution into the underlying tissue toward the targeted area. And as we mentioned, you have to have a good voltage source and a good current source to accomplish that goal. Uh, IONTOGO is uh, simply engineered, specifically no power source, dose dose control are needed. It's wireless, fully self-contained, pull tab activation, no saline required. Mm -hmm. And the no saline required is the number one selling feature of this product. It was uh, widely acceptable beyond what we had imagined at Activa Tech with the IONTOGO IntelliDose, not down to go, but the IntelliDose when it first came out. A comparison, uh, Ionto Patch, really right now, there are, only two manu- there are only two patch products on the market, which is Ionto Patch and Activa Patch products. Uh, Ionto Patch, all of their products require a saline fill, so that means they have a drug, bo- drug fill side and then a saline fill. Um, using saline you have a chance of overfilling the inactive side of the electrode. Their drug reservoir does hold 1.2 to 1.6 cc fill volume. The comparison is no saline required. We use a synthetic polymer carbon conductive element. We have a, and then the drug reservoir is a 2 cc fill volume. This is a foam back adhesive seal around the drug element conductive reservoir to prevent any leakage out of the reservoir onto between tape and skin. The pull tab is necessary to prevent any parasitic discharge of the battery. Before it's used, the pull tab activates the battery. Activation of uh, iontopatch is when you place it on surface skin, it completes a circuit.
There are six treatment kits per box, and this was designed due to the, due to the uh, protocol of four to six treatments, one treatment every other day. So we packaged six treatments per box. Treatment kits are individually, individually packed, and the kits contain an alcohol wipe, drug electrode, and instructions for use. Number one interest from a healthcare provider should be drug dose accuracy or dosing accuracy. And this is just a comparison of IONTOGO 4.0 compared to the IONTOGO STAT. They're both four hour. They're both stated to deliver 80 milliamp minutes in a four hour period of time. And out of the random selection, I believe there were 36 randomly selected electrodes of the ion to go 4.0. And then if you look down here, it's a four hour, it's an 80 milliamp minute. The mean dosage, an average of all of these was 63.4 with an outlier of 45.7 with a range of 84.7. So if you look at this, the drug accuracy is there isn't anything that is higher in drug accuracy than our 4.0. We do have a set in there that uh, patch only operates at 80%. This is a constant voltage product, not a constant current. So the current on these products can fluctuate based on the resistance. So as voltage is continuing to reduce resistance or has the ability to reduce resistance over the 80 milliamp minutes, you could see an, an increase in current over that period of time. So we back it off to a maximum of 80%, which would be uh, shown in the range dosage variance. Uh, you look at STAT, four hour, 80 milliamp minute, the average of the 36 selected patches was 57.8 with a low of 33.6 to 63.4. So again, we went out on the drug delivery accuracy here. When we say 80 milliamp minutes, we are delivering 80 milliamp minutes over that four hour <laughs> period of time. Okay, let's look at the comparison of the 12.0 and the IonoPatch 80. The shorter the wear time, the higher the patient compliance to completing that treatment when they leave the clinic. Two and a half hour, four hour, 12 hour. The longer the treatment time, the compliance diminishes because the patients, for whatever reason, don't accept that wear time as well as they do the 2.5 and 4.0. IontoPatch had a, had a big problem with that when it was a 24-hour patch. You can't get it wet. You can't shower. You can't clean up. So that was a big issue. I don't know if that's what motivated them just to arbitrarily change it to a 14-hour patch, but they did. So here we are with 12.0 again. We are using a button cell battery. We actually have voltage on board. We have current on board. This is a potato battery. <laughs> there is no current. There's no battery. It's uh, activated by a chemical reaction to the drug and the conductive element. So once you apply it to skin, that conductive element starts doing whatever it does. So right out of the chute, here we are with a 12.0, 12-hour product, uh, 80 milliamp minutes. The mean dosage average of all of those is 64.7, as high as 82.5. And this is where it's really dramatic. This is um, the low was 33. That's in 14 hours. And the high was 51.5. This product reduces resistance through the solution on the surface of the skin. The solution reducing the resistance doesn't reduce resistance by voltage. So it takes a long time for that solution to reduce resistance for any expectation of drugs to work. This works off of the process that we mentioned earlier, electroosmosis, okay? The uh, solution is reducing resistance sitting on the surface of the skin to allow whatever medication can move. That's why this is so linear here because we have a voltage source and current source delivering the ions. That's true. 80% of the drug is delivered in the last part of the delivery time. Well, we use shunt technology in hours. That means that the uh, resistance is being, is reducing the voltage and current of the battery. It's a shunt technology automatically shuts us off, our products off at the end of the treatment. This really doesn't shut off. It just goes until one, they take it off or all of that chemical reaction is depleted. Just a comparison summary of the, these two products. One, one nice thing about these products is they're very cost competitive per treatment or per box of six. So that's one of the advantages of, of this product. For those actuaries out there that are controlling what therapists are using today, again, Activa Patch products, 
newer technology, higher dose accuracy. Uh, Iantigo uh, 4.0 delivers 79% of its specified dosage. 12.0, 81%. Compensates for high skin impedance. All, you know, make up for best in class product. And then you look at Ionda patch, it doesn't deliver on any of these that we have in the Activa patch product. 80% compared to uh, 42%. Drug accuracy should be uh, a compelling argument with clinicians. I always enjoyed starting with the uh, Activa patch, IntelliDose 2.5. It's a full feature. There's nothing like it on the market. It was originally designed to compete with the MP Hybresis, which had a controller, a charging station, an electrode. Uh, it came out to compete with that and was very successful as an Activa tech product. It's uh, fully self-contained. As an, it has a microprocessor on board, a hydrogel dispersive, just like the same dispersive uh, on the other two products, the Antigo 4.0 and 12.0. It has a patented shutoff technology, which is the shunt technology. Uh, smart power LED light gives feedback to the clinician initially and then to the patient uh, in the home. It detects and measures skin impedance to optimize drug delivery. Microprocessor, if you were to uh, go inside and get into the uh, makings of the product, there's a hydrogel carbon electrode. The, uh, that's the microprocessor there. It's an 80 milliamp minute dosage, two and a half hours. It's different from the uh, micropore tape of the 4.0 and 12.0. This is a foam back adhesive. Uh, it was initially used because it was easier to contain all the other elements in the product. This is the treatment duration variability. Michael Johnson did the studies for us. He, is, uh, he did all the preliminary studies for MP products. So he's been around for a long time. All of his, all of those studies are available on the website. Uh, this is the just a comparison of how the three operate. The 98. This is the most accurate, which is the 98.7 ion to go. This uh, compared to the stat, which is 81, and then the ion to patch 8052.